The key security challenge that we're facing right now is that we see that the protection of civilians in modern conflicts often becomes an afterthought. We see that more and more belligerents and more and more parties to the conflict choose to ignore the laws of war, which increases both the civilian death toll and reduces the protections that civilians have when living in a conflict area. One thing that is very, very important is to make sure that we as the international community keep challenging all actors who continue to violate the laws of war. It is important that we don't only condemn these practices that kill civilians, but we also hold people accountable and ask them to explain why they continuously violate these laws of war. The other thing that is very important is that we put the focus, the spotlight, of our discussions around peace, security and the conflict back on the civilian population. It is very important that we give agency to the people who live through atrocious situations every day, whether that's in Ukraine, whether that's in Sudan, whether that's in countries like Mexico or Brazil. It is very important that these people get a voice of what they would like to see us do to improve their daily situation. It is important that we have a coalition of uh, willing and qualified actors doing this. So on one hand, it is important that governments take their responsibilities very seriously. We cannot expect, we cannot expect the international community or international bodies to do everything for them. So it is, it is important that governments take these responsibilities seriously, make sure that there are systems in place to hold people accountable for when violations occur and also provide people with safeguards, right? I think when we talk about modern conflicts, the very basic things like access to evacuation routes, access to shelters, access to med medicine, these are all very basic things that the state needs to be able to guarantee to its population, no matter in which situation. I think a lot of what we heard about during this conference talks about the decline of multilateralism. And while that may be true, I don't think we have an alternative to it today. I think it is very important today that regardless of where we're going, the debate, the discussion among actors that are non-aligned, the discussion among actors who have different worldviews continues because the opposite is an even scarier scenario, that we continue polarizing this world we continue saying, well, the ones, one guy is the good guy and the other guy is the bad guy, in which case there's no more dialogue around how we can keep civilians safe and how can we ensure their peaceful existence in countries that are facing conflict. And so we need to continue believing in our systems and building up our systems to fight this polarization that we continue seeing in the modern conflicts. One of the things that made me very hopeful in this conference is, is to see how inclusive it was, how many people we had from the Global South, how many people we had from South and Central America, how many people we had from the Middle East, how many people we had from Asia. I think when we talk about kind of an equal seat at the table to discuss how we should proceed in making this world a better place, this is the model we need to be looking at. And it is a stark difference or stands in stark contrast to other um, events like the Munich Security Conference, where a lot has been written about the fact that many parts of this world had been included from, a con uh, from this conversation about how we improve um, the situations for countries that are at war right now.